always remember. The past is your lesson, the present is your gift, and the future is your motivation. Stay motivated and keep trucking, y'all. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I got another great video for you. Today we got the queen of the operation, Jessica, doing an interview with one of our well-known uh, paid promoters, Arnold Dispatch. All right guys, a lot of people ask about them, want to know what they're about, and today we're going to answer that question. Okay, so stay tuned. Make sure you're hitting that like and subscribe button and uh, stay for the whole video. You're going to get a lot of viable information and stuff in here that even I didn't know about. So for all y'all newcomers coming in the game, make sure you get your pen and paper and you write down this important information. And without further ado, let's get right to it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Motivation and Box Trekking. We have a special show for you today. We're actually gonna have a conversation with Chris Arnold from Arnold Dispatch. Um, she's the logistics manager and also handles the compliance aspect of the company. So uh, for all of you out there who were wondering, especially if you're just getting started, what exactly a dispatcher is, what services they provide, we are gonna go over that today and hear how realistically a dispatcher can help to benefit your, um, your logistics company. So stay tuned for this conversation, it's gonna be a good one. Hey Chris, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. Good, good. Um, so uh, if you don't mind just giving the people a little bit of your background information, um, we have done some some um, ads running on your company, but I don't think anyone really knows who you are. So if you don't mind just giving a little background about who you are when you got started, things like that. My name is Christine Arnold with Arnold Dispatch. I am a logistics manager and also I handle compliance here for the company. Um, I've been in the industry, the trucking industry, for about a year and a half, but I do have 10 years of experience in sales and customer service. So I like to bring that to my position here. Okay, wonderful. I know um, you may have gotten some leads from the, the ads that we've had, and we've heard nothing but good uh, feedback from your services. So I do appreciate you taking the time to come back on and talk to us so that our viewers can get an uh, idea of what to expect when um, working with you or any other dispatcher because you will have an insight that we as um, Amazon only pretty much runners that, you know, we really can't give a lot of information on. So I do appreciate you giving the time to educate our viewers on something that we don't really have that much of an expertise in. So thank you for taking that time. If you are looking um, for a dispatcher, we'll have her information down in the description as well. Okay. Alrighty. So um, Chris, if you don't mind just telling us what services does a dispatcher provide? Um, if you're coming in as a single owner operator, which a lot of our viewers are trying to get started as with a, either one or two a small, very small fleet. What would you expect from a dispatcher? Yeah, and I want to thank you guys for having us on today. And that is a great question. So from a dispatcher, you know, our perspective is we want to help owner operators be successful. So I know that you guys are the, we call you the whiz, <laughs> you and Chris, because you guys have a lot of good information about Amazon. So we mostly handle the OTR side of things. Um, for the 26 foot box trucks as well as power only. And for a dispatcher, um, somebody who understands the market, understands the costs to operate a trucking business, and also how to handle, um, you know, back office, paperwork, customer service, and building those relationships so that the owner operator can get loaded, you know, time and again. Often we realize that, um, owner operators are coming into this industry with very little experience and we just want to help bridge that information gap so that they can be successful so that's helping them as i mentioned before you know building the relationships 
understanding that cost to operate, and then also um, getting loaded time and time again, doing the research so they know what lanes to run, what permits they need um, to have a competitive advantage in this marketplace. Um, so uh, for, I know this this particular channel, and there are some other box truck uh, channels that are out there, but I know for our channel, uh, um, we definitely focus on non-CDL. Is there anything that's different that um, as a dispatcher you would need to uh, maybe let your customer know to expect as a non-CDL driver uh, coming from a dispatch standpoint? Is it any different than running other things as a CDL driver? Yeah, that's Does another good question. Does it change things? Mm -hmm. So I would say the similarities are gonna be, you know, the hours of service. Um, that's going to be the same. But as far as the difference with non-CDL, we're looking at the equipment type, which is typically a 26 foot box truck. So with the drive-in, you know, that is the industry standard, 53 foot drive-in. So when you're looking for loads for those, it's pretty much easy. I mean, you can throw a rock and find a load for, <laughs> you know, a 53 foot drive-in. But the issue is when you're talking about a box truck um, where, looking for those loads it's probably a hundred miles you know in between mm -hmm. a load anywhere from 60 to 100 um and then it typically takes us about two to four hours to find a good paying load that's going in the right direction and that's also the proper you know weight which is ten thousand pounds or less so it right. is quite a time commitment to get on the load board or reach out to brokers who we have relationships with from doing business in the past to see if they're going to load you know, our boss truck. And then another thing right. is the authority age, you know, that always comes up. Do you have any DOT inspections on file? How old is your authority? Um, do you have a HUT permit so that you're able to go up into New York, places like that? Do you have um, TSA clearance or TWIC card? So these are some mm -hmm. of the, um, the benefits that we try to encourage our um, owner operators to get those credentials so that they have a better chance to get loaded. But also we do have CDL box truck drivers who just didn't want to drive a semi and right. um, they're able to make pretty good money in their 26 foot box truck. So there's opportunities out there. And um, because when we started, we actually did OTR and um, I did find that as a single owner operator, it was a lot different than what I thought it was gonna to be to receive loads. You know, I was thinking, especially when we first started, that it was gonna be plenty of loads out there. You know, uh, when you sign up for your uh, factoring company, they connect you with a dispatcher and things like that. And we were told and sold a dream that I didn't feel came, like came to flourishing as a single owner operator with a non-CDL box truck. Um, can you give maybe some realistic insight uh, as to like maybe how often uh, you might find loads for a uh, owner operator uh, that's a non-CDL 26 foot box truck um, or something to look out for when look like looking for a dispatch company so that you don't fall for um, someone kind of just wasting your time. Like what, what are some realistic expectations from that dispatch company? Yeah, a realistic expectation would be, you know, right now, because we have tools that help us analyze, you know, the markets to look at what a drive-in, you know, is getting on the market. Mm -hmm. Typically speaking, a 26-foot box truck is not going to be paid the same as a drive-in. And sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow because they're like, hey, Chris, you know, I'm Doc Height. I take diesel fuel. You know, I can carry this load. But I'm like, you have to remember... A drive-in can carry, what, 48,000 pounds? You can carry exactly. 10. So why would anybody pay you, you know, the same exact dollar amount per mile for the load? Now, sometimes I know people are doing parcels and things like that where you can kind of make it up. But if you're yeah. just somebody who wants to do one pick, one drop, you're really looking at about mm, anywhere from $1.50 to $1.70 on average. So that's why we try to say, learn your cost to operate slash or eliminate all the unnecessary expenses so that way you're not putting unnecessary pressure on the dispatcher or even yourself for finding the load because what we've seen is you know there are loads on the board right 
10 right. miles and they might be paying, you know, $200. So yes, you may $20 a mile on that particular load, mm -hmm. but how much does it cost you each month and each week to run your business? If, even right. if you did that four times, that's only like $800. Is right. that enough to keep you in business? Probably not. While the person who is doing a dollar 70, you know, running their 2,500 miles, you know, they brought in three, four, five thousand dollars for the week. Mm -hmm. So we just try to take a different approach that the only way in this business, really, when you're OTR is to turn the miles like there's no other way. There's a direct relationship as far as the amount of miles that you're turning and the mm -hmm. money that you're going to be able to earn. So that's one of the big hurdles um, that we have when we get new people to sign on. And then there's challenges being a new authority. It used mm -hmm. to be 90 days, but to be honest, right now it's right around six months with two DOT inspections. That's what the brokers want to see. So if you're coming in with all these restrictions, you know, I'm only going to do, you know, the Southeast or I'm only going to do, um, you know, four states around my area. Well, mm -hmm. how are you going to do that when the work is not there? Right? right. So we just try to help them understand what the market is right now. And if it doesn't make sense for you, you might need to go in another direction. That might be Amazon. That might be Final Mile. But if you come to OTR, which is what we specialize in, you want to mm -hmm. keep your costs low so that we can keep you loaded and keep your wheels turning. And the other thing coming over here is that you're going to have hotel because you're not supposed to be sleeping in your truck. You're going to have to have factoring unless you can wait 30 days to get paid. You don't have to have a dispatcher. But somebody's going to need to be looking at the load board while you're driving, and it should not be you, according to the FMCSA, right? right? And I've also heard people say, well, you can just look for a load when you're getting unloaded or when you're getting loaded. Well, actually, you should be paying attention to the freight that's being put on your truck. Is it damaged? Mm. Does it have the correct piece count? Did you get the correct signatures on the bills of lading? So you don't need to be distracted as an owner operator at any point you know, during your job. That's why you need to hire a dispatcher or allow us to train someone in your life, whether that's your wife, your girlfriend, your business partner, somebody else who can keep their eyes on the load board. Cause you just never know when that load that you need will pop up. And it might not be when you're able to take a break. It might've been two hours ago while you were on the road. Right. Um, and, and you know, I, I'm glad that you mentioned that because there are, I know that you deal with compliance, which Honestly, uh, as a non-CDL driver, not having to have experience and, um, mm -hmm. you know, just coming in, it's very easy to come in, but it's very easy to make those mistakes because you are unaware of the compliance that FMCSA still expects from you. Um, even though it's not a, which honestly, you know, is dangerous. And that's probably why since now it's been flooded with non-CDL drivers coming in uh, to this industry. Um, and being sold all these dreams by the, you know, social media influencers about how this actually works. And they're, t they're telling people illegal information. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's oftentimes to sell something to them, a course, a mentorship or something like that, mm -hmm. which is, um, you know, when they come to you, someone who is actually going to give them work, it falls apart because the things that they are expecting to do, you know, you'll see a box trucker saying that they can sleep in their truck when they don't have a sleeper. Um, you know, they you see them running up and down the highway um, saying that they're getting all of this money, OTR, but hours of service is barely ever mentioned. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that because unfortunately, those are things that will, run, that will put you out of business as well beyond not making money. But, you know, those violations will will, you know, ruin your entire company, everything that you worked hard for. So, um, you know, if you are hearing this viewers, please reach out, know what those compliances are. Even if you don't necessarily need the dispatcher aspect of it, if you just want to go over compliance, that's something that, um, Arnold dispatch is able to, uh, sit down with you and make sure that you understand. Um, Totally. And can you also uh, just quickly talk about the self-dispatching course that you have? Because that's uh, one thing that we often promoted in our previous videos and on Instagram, the self-dispatching course. Absolutely. I just want to touch on hours of service briefly. Mm. So according to the FNCSA, you know, there's a 14 hour shift. 11 of those hours can be spent driving. Okay. And mm. then after eight hours, 
it's mandatory that the driver takes a 30 minute break. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the number one violation <laughs> that we have seen is somehow the owner operators are splitting their time and they're going into something called sleeper bird. And I'm like, if you don't have the FMCSA approved sleeper bird, you should not be um, changing your uh, duty status to sleeper bird. So we have seen that um, a lot. Another thing is um, personal conveyance, misusing personal conveyance. Mm -hmm. If you are doing anything to further your business or pick up a load, drop off a load, get closer to the pickup or drop off point, you should not be in personal conveyance. Um, a third violation that we've seen is also not having the proper identification on the side of the truck. So that's like the company name, you know, the decals. So these are the just basic things that we want them to have. And then also their paper logs, having to have eight days worth of paper logs. In case that ELD ever, ever malfunctions, you're not gonna be able to blame it on, pardon me, whoever your um, ELD provider is, because mm -hmm. as the owner operator, you are charged with the responsibility of knowing everything about your business. If you're ever pulled over by a safety official, it's just you and him on the side of the road and everything has to be correct. So those right. are some of the top violations that we've seen. And we just try to help um, the owner operators uh, prevent them from making those mistakes. And now as far as the self-dispatch training, so it's the basic training of teaching them how to use the load board, how to search, how to calculate the rates so that they're not overbidding and how to build the relationships with the brokers. Because the ultimate goal is to get the broker to reach out to you before mm -hmm. they post their loads on the load board. But a lot of that has to do with the way that you handled the load. Did you pick it up on time? Did you deliver on time? Were you communicating properly? You know, did you have a positive attitude? Um, did you present yourself professionally when you arrived on site? So all of that, you know, makes a difference as to if a broker is gonna call you back or not. Right. So that's right. what we try to go over. Because some, and I wanted to say this, mm -hmm. you know, it's our position that if your cost per mile, when you've done your math, is over a dollar seventy, you mm -hmm. really cannot afford a dispatcher. And I know <laughs> I might ruffle some feathers with that because obviously we work off of commission but we're not going to have someone bleeding money just so we can get paid until you go out of business. That's not that's not how we do business. So we try to sit down with you, go through those costs, and if it makes sense for you to have somebody in your family to self-dispatch, then that's what you need to do. And then when you're able to build your cash flow, then you can say, okay, now we're ready to contract with a dispatcher. But before then, it doesn't make sense. And the other benefit is of self-dispatch is they start to learn how the industry works, where instead of just applying a necessary pressure, like, no, I need $2, I'm not moving my truck. This market is paying $1.50. There's no amount of negotiation that I can do to make yeah. a broker pay you $2 for a lane that's paying $1.50, you know? Yep. Well, I, I do appreciate you giving that real insight because like I said, it's a lot of misinformation out here online and we hear motivation and box trucking and um, we do focus on Amazon, but I know that our viewers are looking for other options outside of that because not everyone can be successful with Amazon. Maybe not everyone has that in their market and if they're going to travel, maybe they can use a combination of OTR to get to an Amazon where they could possibly spend some time in um, a location that is not their hometown. So, um, you know, working together uh, with, uh, well, really just figuring out what works for your company and your mm -hmm. business. And um, just quickly, because we only have a few minutes left, I, I did want to touch on something that we had a conversation about that may, may ruffle feathers as well. But yeah. that's what we do over here, motivation and box trucking. Um, <laughs> we ruffle those feathers. So um, what, what, we, what we're touching on is the, the I'm a boss aspect. I, I don't want to be an employee and uh, I don't want anyone to tell me what to do. Uh, that's usually what the main complaint with Amazon is, that they treat you like an employee. Um, do you have some insight or maybe like a story or something that uh, could touch on that from the dispatcher side as well and what to, to tell the owner operators to realistically expect? Absolutely. And I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, we always congratulate 
you know, the owner operators who have, you know, struck out to do things on their own. You know, it's commendable. We respect that. However, you know, the old school way of getting clients, you know, before social media and all that, it had to be boots on the ground where you were out there knocking on the doors at the shipping and receiving yards, introducing yourself. Hey, my name is Tom Jones. I have a truck. Do you have any freight that I need to move? And they enter into business with you. You might have had to visit, I don't know, 20, 30, 50. It, I mean, it just all depends before some before you were able to land a contract. Today, the process is so streamlined that once you get your authority, all you have to do is find a dispatcher or get your own subscription to the low board and there is work for you. So that's a major advantage. Now, the issue is, how do you keep your truck loaded if you don't understand how this industry works and what's available for your equipment type? So what we find is that a lot of owner operators just say, hey, I've got my own authority. You know, they're feeling proud and that's great. But now you are a novice in this industry. You're basically entry level, intern level. Everybody else has one, two, five year authority. You have one truck. Your authority is one week and you're standing here demanding all this money. Like it doesn't happen like that. If anything, you have to pay your dues. As an intern, I'm not going to get the corner office. I'm going to be getting coffee, doing what I got to do. Another thing is we see them paying themselves too much. Sometimes we go through their cost per mile. Mm -hmm. That's the service that we offer. So we go through everything. You know, your insurance is this much, you know, your your truck rental, what you pay per mile. We estimate what your fuel is going to be, your factor and dispatch fees. We get all the way down. You're going to pay yourself $5,000 a month. (laughs) Do that. Can you, you can't even tell me 10 customers that you have. You have no customer. You just know that you want. 5,000 a month. Now for maintenance, it was zero for that. So we try to help them get a realistic understanding of this business, whether they decide to do business with us or not, at least you can be equipped so that you're not going out of business. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you're a new authority and you're holding your truck waiting for $2, you're more than likely going to go out of business on the OTR dispatch side, because right Mm -hmm. now it's national news rates are down you have to be competitive you have to cut expenses and you have to tighten your belt you know and we can help them do that just because we've seen so much we started off with just dispatching our service menu grew because we were getting questions that we we didn't know how to handle so we had to go do the research we had to go get the training so we could provide more value to the carrier well i i think that is um an excellent service that you're providing because like I said when I was fished in at first I was sold these unrealistic expectations and and you know non-realities of what to expect by coming in as a single owner operator and so I do appreciate you being honest um and um definitely looking out for the owner operator to stay in business and working with them to understand what it takes in order to be successful as a logistics company um you know we're not just uh gig workers and fly by night tried it didn't work we definitely want to educate ourselves on how to be successful and have this last years and years and years and whether that's um trying to scale or just providing yourself self-employment that is uh you know that is reliable so uh, there's there's so many different aspects to this logistics uh game Mm -hmm. and I'm, i'm just glad that you were able to break it down from a dispatcher's point of view for our viewers um and if like I said, if anyone is interested in any of those uh, services that Arnold Dispatch provides, whether that is the self-dispatching, uh, OTR dispatching, or uh, just compliance information, make sure that you reach out. We'll have a link in the description below. And for us, if you wanted any information, I did put together an ebook that touches on some of the compliance information. Um, it's just a quick resource. It's not as in depth as I'm sure that Auto Dispatch would provide for you, but you could definitely uh, get a downloadable PDF version of that too, so that you can keep it in your truck so that you can know where to go and what to look for uh, when you're running your company, because we don't want it to fail based off of uh, unrealistic expectations. So um, uh, we have less than a minute now. So is there one last thing that you wanted to let everyone know? Yeah, I just wanted to say for a box truck owner operator, you know, it's great if you're able to average about $5,000 a week. 
turning anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 miles and, you know, really earning between 800 to a thousand dollars a day, you should be able to be successful just with those basic goals and getting your expenses in line. And I want to thank you guys for having us on. We really appreciate oh, sure. what you're doing for the box truck, the box Definitely. truck community, lots of good information. We appreciate the partnership. Thanks, Chris. We'll talk to you later. We have to do a part two. Okay. Sounds good. Take care, y'all. All right. Bye-bye.